and welcome to WWDC! Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Ali. I'm a junior doctor working in Cambridge, and in this video, I'm gonna be taking advantage of my vast swaths of medical expertise, and I'm gonna be sharing some of the highlights from Apple's WWDC 2019 keynote. As usual, all the things I'm gonna talk about are gonna be linked in timestamps in the video description and in a pinned comment, and over here, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you've got something better to do with your time. Oh, it's awesome! But yeah, let's just get into it. So the thing I'm probably most excited about is iPad OS, which is coming out this autumn. And I absolutely love my iPad. I use it every single day at work for about 10 hours a day. I use it when I get home. I use it for almost everything except a few things that only the laptop can do. And the cool thing about this new iPad OS is that it's making a specific operating system just for the iPad, which means the iPad is getting closer and closer to being a genuine laptop replacement. And I think actually when it comes out this autumn, the iPad will be able to replace a laptop for a lot of people. Yeah. I'm gonna do a separate video covering the iPad OS more in depth because I'm such an iPad evangelist and I've been singing the praises of the iPad Pro to everyone for the last two years. But just quickly, the things that I'm really excited about are firstly, split screen functionality. Secondly, the fact that you can now attach external drives to your iPad Pro, which makes it actually legit for photo and video editing. Thirdly, they're finally gonna change the annoyance of moving a cursor around on the screen, which was a big impediment to actually getting real work done. Fourthly, they're introducing a ton more keyboard shortcuts. So if you have the Apple external keyboard thing like I do, you'll be able to be a lot more efficient on the iPad, which was one of my major beefs with it. And finally, they're also introducing using desktop mode on Safari, which means you can use Safari as a fully fledged web browser rather than just the mobile version. And this is gonna be really handy for me personally for editing websites and Ghost and Squarespace and also for everyone who ever uses Google Docs and is annoyed by the fact that you can't edit Google Docs on an iPad. So yeah, those were the highlights for me. I think all the iPad OS features are moving it closer and closer to being a laptop replacement. And I suspect when it comes out this autumn, it's probably gonna replace my laptop for everything except like video editing. Apple also announced the latest version of iOS, iOS 13, which is gonna be coming out this fall. And the main thing that they were kind of selling about this was the fact that dark mode is now a thing on iOS and on iPadOS. So if you were the sort of person who uses their phone in bed or at night, that's gonna be kind of good. I personally have stopped using my phone in bed ever since I read the book, Why We Sleep, and that told me that I shouldn't use my phone in bed, so I've been having it across the room from me. So I don't think I'm gonna be using dark mode personally, but it seems like it's the facelift that everyone was excited about. Some new features that I think will be genuinely useful are firstly, the new swipe keyboard. I've tried third party alternatives like Swift Key and stuff, and I've never found them to be that good. But now that Apple is introducing a native swipey keyboard, it means you can reply to text and stuff from your hand like very quickly, you're just using one hand, which is pretty awesome. I'm also quite excited about the new photos feature. So as everyone does, I take a ton of photos on my iPhone and I almost never look back through them. So what the new photos feature does is that it makes a little tab where it resurfaces some of your photos and and it gives you different memories from different times and puts them all together. So if you wanna go through your photos, it's like a nice way of reliving your memories. They're also introducing a lot of new features for video editing on an iPhone. And this seems a bit weird, but I think this is gonna be quite helpful because when I'm posting videos of myself playing piano and singing songs to my Instagram story, I film it on my iPhone and then I have to edit it on iMovie on my iPhone and it's not a very good experience. You can't really do much with it. So the fact that a more comprehensive video editing experiences coming to iOS makes me personally quite excited. And then they talked a little bit about how they're gonna update Apple Maps, which honestly no one really cares about. And actually one thing that they did talk about was how they're having these like me emojis, these personalized emojis. And now you can finally have profile pictures for people in iMessage. This is a feature that's been missing for absolutely ages. So I'm quite excited uh, to see how that works on my phone. Thirdly, Apple unveiled the latest version of Mac OS, which is gonna be called Catalina, which is apparently named after a place in California. But the cool thing about that is that the wallpaper is really pretty. So I'm probably gonna to stick to the default wallpaper, but there's two features that I'm really excited about. Uh, firstly is the sidecar feature that lets you use your iPad Pro or iPad as an external display for your MacBook. I take my MacBook everywhere with me and often when I'm home, I wanna be doing some video editing, but I often bemoan the lack of an external display. And there have been some solutions to this over the years, things like Duet and other hardware solutions, but they've never been that great. And I think now that Apple is making a first party alternative for this, that's gonna be a, a genuinely useful feature. And secondly, there was quite a lot of banter in the keynote about how bad iTunes is. And it was kind of cool that Apple were poking fun at themselves about how bad iTunes is. But the cool thing is that they're now gonna turn iTunes into three different apps. So that's Apple Music, Apple Podcasts, and Apple TV, rather than iTunes trying to do absolutely everything. But I think the most important part is that when you plug your iPhone into your MacBook to try and sync something, it's not gonna come up with the iTunes window automatically. And this is something that everyone in the in the keynote was like really excited about, that when he, when he was like, you plug it in and nothing happens. And everyone was like, yeah, thank God for that. That was like a, a big deal for everyone who's experienced the frustration of plugging your iPhone in and suddenly, iTunes comes up. But yeah, that's probably the thing I'm most excited about uh, with the new Mac OS. 
Fourthly, they announced the new Mac Pro. This is now gonna be the machine that I lust after that I'm pretty much never gonna be able to afford. And a lot of jargon that I don't even know what it means. Like the, the presenter got really excited about the 1000 nit display. It was like, okay, what does 1000 nits mean? But every, everyone in the room seemed to get excited about that. And then when she mentioned that the, uh, the, the power supply is 1.4 kilowatts, everyone got really excited about that. So apparently that must be a big deal. But again, I have absolutely no idea what that means which is probably a good sign that I don't need to get a Mac Pro and I should not even try to maybe think about getting a Mac Pro. It's definitely a device aimed at the more pro end of the spectrum. I'm quite happy doing my editing on Final Cut on my MacBook Pro. But yeah, I'm sure the uh, Mac Pro website thing is gonna be on my bookmarks and I'm gonna be lusting after it for the next few years and probably never gonna be able to afford it unless Apple feels like sponsoring me. So Apple, if you're watching this, then just for the record, I will be more than open to getting a review unit of the Mac Pro and doing a video review about what the Mac Pro is like and how it fits into my Pro workflow. But uh, yeah, let's move on. Finally, let's talk about this new display that they've made, this Retina 6K display called the Pro Display XDR, which stands for Extreme Dynamic Range. Now, uh, the person presenting this was talking a lot about HDR, which is high dynamic range, and how it's important to have that on certain monitors, and how it's similar to reference monitors that people use in film production, but those cost like $43,000. And this costs only $5,000. It seemed like when they announced the price of $5,000, People kind of got excited that, oh, this is this, this is a good price. I saw the $5,000 price tag and I was like, what the hell? I'd have been kind of leaning towards buying it if it had been less than 1,000. 5,000 is just completely ridiculous for a display. But I imagine if you're a pro working in those industries and it's an alternative display to your 43,000 one, I imagine it's gonna be a good deal for them. But then the really funny thing, and I think the best part of the keynote for me was when they announced that the stand wouldn't come with the monitor and the stand was gonna cost an extra $999. And there's just that moment of silence where everyone in the room is just like, what the hell? And then you can hear some like mumbling and muttering and everyone being like, oh, what's going on? And the presenter, he, he, you can see him like floundering a bit when he's like, hang on, what's going on? I expected applause when people were like, you've got to pay an extra thousand dollars for this stand for your monitor because it's just going to come as a panel. Um, but yeah, that was quite a funny part of, of the coverage. So that was a brief overview of some of the highlights from WWDC 2019. I'm personally excited about where technology is going. And to be honest, I've, I've always kind of wanted to make one of these videos where you just kind of do coverage of like a tech event. But in the past, I never felt like enough of a tech YouTuber. But now that the YouTube channel has grown and that people come up to me on the streets and be like, oh, I bought an iPad because of you. I think I've, I have I now have the right to feasibly <laughs> talk to the camera and explain that I don't know what a thousand nits means. But hopefully uh, you guys found this video semi-educational uh, and are looking forward to the new run of tech as much as I am. So yeah, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, then please consider doing so. Have a lovely day and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.